<laughs> Today, the project is this cute llama with the gifts on it. Um, and it's on the squircle plate, the rectangular squircle plate. And um, the colors you're gonna need are Black Lab, Polar Bear, and um, Nutty For You, which is um, this color here. Um, as far as the colors of the gifts, you can use any colors you want. I used red, Kermit, and what a yoke. Oh, and I used uh, Blue Heaven or a blue so you could that's how you that's all the colors there are but these colors are optional because you know you might want to do you want to do whatever you want whatever colors you want on the packages so what I've done so far is coated my plate in black I've got three coats of black on here okay and on this I'm, I've already traced my um, I've already traced my llama on the tissue paper okay so I'm gonna move the other paper and now I'm going to trace the tissue paper onto the plate um, right onto the black I've got a water-based marker um, and what I'm going to do is go so that this edge right here is at the you know I only want this much snow okay so I'm going to do it right there it fits this plate perfect although you could do it on any other plate and now I'm going to trace it make sure that when you do this, that it is bleeding through. Now it bleeds through even onto the black. I've got a little gray water-based marker is what I'm using. Okay, so you wanna trace your uh, design on here. Okay, and I take this up, as you can see, you can see the whole thing pretty clearly. So now we're gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is the polar bear, okay? That's the only thing you are gonna put on with a brush. So you're gonna squeeze some of this out because you're gonna put this on pretty heavy, okay? Because we don't want, we're not gonna have to put on more than one coat. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this on, as you can see, I'm putting it on very heavy. I'm kind of dabbing it on with the brush, okay? It's quicker than doing it with a fun rider. I could do it with a fun rider, but, so I'm dabbing it on so that it's a little bit heavy in spots. Okay, so now before this dries, I'm gonna take a brush. Uh, I found the best brush to do this is maybe a um, like a brush that you already have that's kind of, um, you could try a, uh, you could try a little, um, you know, like a dry brush or something, but any way that you can get some of the paint out, but you only want a little out, okay? Now, you can swish it too if you feel like you can like turn it a little to get these little spots. See the spots to get, I just wanted it to look a little bit like fur. So now we're gonna go down here. The reason I'm doing this first, cause we wanna be able to clean up. We don't wanna mess up anything else once we get the paint on there and where this is on so wet. Cause you do want those heavy spots so you can see the white, but you also wanna show some of the black underneath beneath the, this white, so. The edges don't, you're not gonna outline this, so the edges don't have to be perfect. It's a llama and he's kinda, um, and try not to drip like I just did across the plate, uh, cause you'll have to clean that up after. So I'm gonna go, uh, try to go the best I can around this, um, the little um, scarf here, okay? So you can use a smaller brush if you want to. Because it's harder to get in there a little bit. But I'm going to show you how to fix that after. Now I am going to get a, a, 
a smaller brush to go on the edge because what's going to happen is um, so I'm going to have a probably a really small brush um, like almost like a detail brush because you're going to do this outer edge right here and you're going to have to you definitely need a small brush okay now while you're doing this take this and dab it in and then I'm going to do you know, the t you know how I said we, you know, swished it around out here. Well, on this, I'm going to do it with this same little brush. I'm going to dry it off and then swish it around because otherwise I'm going to mess up the whole scarf if I try to do it with that bigger brush. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, now I went only down to here because now I want to stop and do this. Now I'm going to take, you know, I have a paper towel here. Um, now I'm going to take and I'm going to wipe, wipe my brush off a little so that I don't have any paint on it. And then I'm going to take some of that um, color out, okay? So just a little bit. I'm going to swish some of this around. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a minute just to take a little bit of it out so it's not just solid white. I'm gonna do it in the middle here too because like I said, I don't wanna mess up the whole scarf. So I'm just kinda of taking some out, but leaving some globs of, now on this, this outer edge here, I can maybe do this a little bit because we're gonna go clean it up a little after. Sometimes you got to wipe it off a little, the brush, so it doesn't have so much paint on it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, so see, I'm going to show you what I got so far. Okay, so if you could see the close-up of this, you see how it's got the swishy things in it? Now I'm going to take, um, this is the little square brush that I use for everything to clean up. I clean up everything with that which I dip it in water and I just dab it off. And then I take the brush and I go like this. This is how I get my straight lines. I take the brush and I'm going around the edge of the scarf. I'm wet, wetting it, dabbing it off so that it's not really, really wet. I don't want water on here. I just want enough water to clean off this edge. But this little side chisel edge right here works perfect especially this little brush it's one of my favorite brushes um, to fix this stuff so you're going to go on the edge of the whole scarf to clean that up because you do want this this edge clean because you want that scarf to look like it's straight okay now I'm going to turn my plate because now i got to do this side. Okay, so now I'm going to do this side. I'm going to do it perfect over here. I shouldn't use the word perfect. Ha <laughs> ha. Not perfect, but this, this, when you, when you get used to using this little brush, uh, this little square brush, I remember a friend of mine, his name was Ron. Uh, he, um, has passed away, but he was in the industry for a long time. Ron Apgar, you might know him. Um, and he knew so much about this stuff and painting. He owned a studio. And I remember him coming to a class of mine. And um, and I happened to do this. And, you know, he seen me doing it. And he came to me after and said, um, boy, you know, and I didn't think I could teach Ron anything, but Ron said, what a great thing to do. I, I'm going to use that all the time now because it's a great way to clean up stuff. And it's something a lot of people don't do. Um, if I want to clean up even around the, I'll even around the edge here, you can do it. It's better than scraping it later and getting all this dust and stuff and waiting for it to dry because you don't have to. You could just do this so that, you you know, you're just kind of getting a nice clean edge. So you can do this on any clean edges. And once it dries, now I have this, this nice line going around, which is 
it, it evens anything off. You can clean up anything with this brush. It's good, um, great little trick to know and have. Okay, so that's it on that. Now I'm gonna finish my, um, I'm gonna finish my body of the, um, the llama. And remember, I'm gonna still do the swish thing, but you see how heavy I'm putting it on? I'm kind of just dropping it down there because I want some heavy stuff. So that's what's giving you this, that's what's giving you this light and dark because it's heavy in the other places. It's on pretty thick, so. It don't worry, it's not on thick enough to cause a problem. I know that's the first thing some, some of you are thinking, oh my God, I can't put it on heavy. It's going to do something bad, but it's not that heavy. So it's not heavy coats. I'm actually taking, it's only heavy spots. As you can see, even with this brush, if you don't have, I'm going to show you too, that if you don't have a, um, a dry brush, like I had, like one of those stiff brush to do those swirl things, you can do it with this brush, which is what I'm going to do with this one, just so you can see that. It will do that. Now I want to get down to the tail. Yes, I looked up llamas and they do have a tail. Okay, so now if I want to get this, some swishes on this one, I'm just going to dry my brush again. I'm going to dry my brush and then I'm going to, actually this brush, I, I got to use a, if you don't have the, one of these, um, you know, like a dry brush, use a fluffy brush, like a brush that's like, like this maybe. It's an old brush. It's, I mean, it's a Moderna. It's a new one of the purple line, but of course it's very used, which gives it that fluffy, which some people don't want, but that's, it doesn't have a point anymore, but it's great for doing this. So now I can, now I can do some twirls. See, I can just twist it. And that's what I'm doing with this. Just keep drying it off so you don't, you know, have that in there. Uh, you don't want it. You don't want to keep your brush wet because it ain't gonna work. So I'll try to get it a little closer to so you can see what I'm doing here. Do you see how this is kind of? Um, it's just a brush that doesn't have a point, but that's what you want. So you can put the swirls on with this too, which which works. And do you see how I have some? Definite, um, don't put this on, if you put it on too thin, it's just going to dry and you're not even going to be able to do this swirl thing. Okay. You want to try to do it a little bit on the tail also. And if you get any on the outside of the tail, like, like I just did, um, you can again, take this little square cleanup brush, wet it, dab it off, and then just clean up those little spots. It's even good for cleaning up these little spots that I got over here without scraping. I can scrape them off or I can wipe them off with this without actually taking the paint, the color off underneath. So, and once they dry, they'll be fine. So that's just a little bit of a, just little tips. Okay. All right. That's good. Now, uh, all right. That's the fur. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, um, we're ready for the next step. So the next step is going to be, we're going to use Fun Riders, okay? And um, actually, before I even, this is the next step. We're going to use a Fun Rider, and it's going to be a Polar Bear that's in it, okay? Um, and... What we're going to do is, you can use a brush for this part too if you want to, but I'm going to show you that. So this is a paper cutter, paper punch. So it just, you can get them at Michael's. It's a snowflake. I had two different sizes and I punched the uh, snowflakes out. Now, what you need to do with this is you need to use the outside of the, the snowflake, the, the stencil part of the snowflake, not the little snowflake part because uh, we have to go inside. We have to do the white so in on the black. So you're going to take these and um, I've got three or four of these bigger ones, okay? So I'm going to dab them in water and I'm going to put a, 
you know, I'm going to put one down. We're going to be careful with the bigger ones because the bigger ones are a little harder to, um, a little harder to put down because, um, you know, when you dip them in the water, they get a little flimsy. Okay. So you want to do that. There's a big one. I'm going to put, um, a big one up here in the top here. If you're careful with them, you go right on there. It, it'll, I, I, then you won't have to worry about it flopping too much. So you're going to dip it in, put it down carefully. Okay. That's it. Okay. Now, um, I've got one more big one. So you can see that I cut around the snow. This one I didn't, I just cut square, but I'm just using it for the inside of the snowflake. So now I'm going to put a few of these little ones around. So I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one here. You know, I just want to space them around. So I got four big ones and I've got, um, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little ones. Okay. You want to dab it so you have, get the excess water out of it, okay? So that's what I got, seven little ones. So I'm going to put one here. Um, one over here. And I got one more that I will put down here to break it up. Okay, so I got seven little ones and then the big ones. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fun writer filled with the white and I'm going to fill these in because I want them nice and thick. Okay, I want them a little thick. So if I brush it on with paint, it, it's, I'm going to have to put it on. I can do the, I can do either way. So I'm going to show you both. Okay, so you can either take, um, take some white. You could do it with a fun writer or this. So you could take some white. In fact, this is just as easy. You could just do it like this, where you're gonna, the only thing with the brush, you gotta be careful you don't get it on the outside of the stencil. So you're just gonna put it in there like that and let it dry. If you're using the fun writer, you're just gonna fill it in. You don't wanna touch the paper though, okay? I might do them all with a brush. It goes on a little thicker with the fun writer, but you can glob it on a little thick with the, um, with the brush too, okay? So the brush is a little bit quicker, not much. Okay, so I'm going to dab these, and this is like a number six or number eight brush. It's just a small round brush, not too big. You can use a six or an eight. I'm going to put it in this one. Now, remember, you got to keep, you got to put it in heavy because this is black. You're going white over black, so you want it a little bit heavy. You can see how nice the white works on the black because this is just how I did these, Okay. So this one, you don't want any black showing through where the, the, the llama, I purposely showed some of the black going through it. You only have to let this dry. When you do this paper technique, you only have to let it dry for like, um, maybe about five minutes and then you can pull the paper off. It doesn't take long. It, the only time if, if I pull it off right this minute, right after I put it on, it might leak a little bit. But if I wait even five or 10 minutes, it starts drying up already a little bit. So you can, you can pull this paper on. So paper off. So we're going to let that, we're going to let that happen. We're going to dry it a few minutes. And if you go too fast, like I am doing right now, when you do put the thickness on your brush like this of paint, you're going to make drips like I just did. You can run it across the plate and make drips that you got to clean up after. So, um, so you want to be careful for that. I'm not paying attention to it, so I'm just dripping it. But Because um, you do have to, like I said, you have to put a lot on your brush to get it on there pretty thick, okay? It's sort of globbed on, which is, you know, not how we normally paint, but that's what, what I'm doing, because otherwise I could brush this on 
And if I brush it on, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have to do three or four coats to cover the black, you know, if I'm brushing it on like this really thin. Plus it gets the chance of taking up, taking, you know, the paper, messing up the paper. If I just drop it in, it doesn't do anything. It's just nice, it's, you know, goes on. It doesn't, I'm gonna peel up that paper. And as long as you got did it like I showed you, um, you'll see that the, you know, you'll see that the paper sticks pretty good. You don't have to worry about it because you're dipping it right in the water. It's wet. It's going on the, um, on the piece. The one thing you don't want to do is if the black was wet, you don't want to put the paper right on the wet paint. Wet paint and wet and water are two different things. So if you put it on the wet paint, what's going to happen is, um, you're going to be stuck. You're going to put it on the wet paint and then you're going to pull up the paper and it's going to pull the paint that some of the paint, it's going to, you know, not do a job on the paint. So your, your piece, you don't want that to happen. So you just want to put this on so that you're, um, you know, you're putting it on the, the paint, the glaze that's already dry. Okay. So we're going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then go to the next step. Okay, now we're going to peel off the paper. As you see, I did one. Um, you're going to use a little, I have a little pin, a little common pin, and uh, the ones that go in the Fun Rider bottles. And you're just going to peel it up, and that's going to get thrown away. You can't reuse the same paper. That's the one thing. But it's a great stencil, and it's cheap because it's just little copy paper. So you just use the this to... Um, the pin to just get up the edge and then you can get the rest with your fingers. You don't want, you just want to be careful when you're pulling it up, you don't drop the paper back down because it's got paint on it because it doesn't dry on the paper. So as you can see how simple this is and how great these snowflakes look, okay? If you got any on the outer edge, you can clean it up later like I did a little bit. Um, you can see there's a little bit right here I just dripped, but I can get that cleaned up and I can clean up that. Uh, mostly when it's dry, it's easy to clean it up. But anyway, that's what the snowflake. Now you can see that wetness around here. That's just gonna dry. That's not gonna show up when you fire it. It's just the paper and it, that stayed wet on the bottom, so that's it. So don't worry about that, okay? Now, the next step we're gonna go to you should let that dry because you can go to the next step, but you don't want to be putting your hand in that. You want to be going over it, okay? So I'm going to go to the next step. Let me move this out of the way because I don't think we need it now. So the next step is I'm going to take, this is, um, this is Nutty For You. Um, it's 2370, and I've got it in a Fun Rider bottle. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to get on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And then... Do you see how, you can see that this, there's two eyes here from when I traced it, they're black. I'm gonna try to go around that, okay? So I don't have to even put the black nose in or outline it, okay? So you can go over it and just put black over the nutty for you after, if you want to. You can do that, but I'm just gonna try to go around it. Even if I have to fix it after, it just seems easier. So I kind of followed my pattern and just went around it. You see, so I got the nose and the uh, the mouth. And that's it. I can get a little close. But if you're, if you're a little nervous with the fun rider, like I said, you can solid coat the whole thing. And then you can go back and do the black on top of the nutty few for the eyes and the... Um, the nose. So I'm going to go around the eyes, the same thing, I'm going to go around the eyes. So I have little round eyes. I'm going to put the little white dot in the eye after when I'm done. So now the whole idea is when I get to the edge where this, um, when I get to the edge where this, the, 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 um, the, the fur meets the, the head of the, the face of the llama, I'm not going to go right up to the white because I just like it's going to look like I outlined it. Um, you can see in this, you only need one coat because I'm doing it with the phone, fun writer. It's just going to cover really well. 
Okay, so see how I did that? So I left that little black line, okay? So now this, the same color is down here on the legs. So I'm gonna do the same thing. But you can see, I'm gonna put the, the color on. And these two lines, these two are, legs are right together. But I'm gonna also, again, leave a space where my line was, where my line from my pattern, you know, that I drew on here is so that I have a space so you can see that there's two legs there. And I'm gonna leave a line also where the fur um, meets the legs, okay? So you can see what I'm doing. I'm leaving a line there so that now I don't have to put an outline there. I don't have to put an outline around the sheep either because I've already got my, I'm just leaving the space. Anything you paint black and you use a fun writer for, you can do this with. You can just leave spaces wherever your lines are. See, now I have a I have a line going right down between the legs, so I'm going to leave a space where that line is so that I can divide it, and then I don't have to do the outline. I won't have to do a black, because otherwise it's just going to be solid, this color. It would be solid with the Nutty For You, and then it would be... Um, I would have to go put a black line there to separate the legs. Now I don't have to do anything. I'm done. I'm done with the legs. So you could see how simple that was. That's it. And there's my snow line. I don't know if you could see that in the, the video here, but that's it. So that's the nutty for you. Okay. Um, next step. We're going to go to the next step. Okay. The next step is um, doing the red. So... Same thing. Uh, I'm gonna do it with the. Um, we're gonna do it with the fun writer. I'm gonna put the red in. One coat with the fun writer. Just fill it in. Try not to scrape the. Um, the plate that much try to put it on without scraping it if you do scrape it do it very lightly but you're filling it in so you don't you're not trying to draw, draw a straight line so you're just squeezing it and leaking out the paint it's it's fine it's like put it's probably the equivalent of putting three or four coats on black with a brush one coat with a fun ride is probably the equiv equivalent of that now do you see where the scarf is so now the scarf i want to leave I want to leave wherever, I'm going to outline this a little bit to show you, so, uh, because you can't, you probably can't see it with the, I'm going to use this Sharpie marker to, so now you can see, you can see the line that I'm drawing, okay, but this is where my lines are in the scarf, okay, there's no lines, well, actually, there is a line right going right down here, okay, so that's my scarf, you can see, I drew it in because it dried and it dried so that it's not, you can't see it as much. You can see the lines I have now. I'm going to avoid those lines with my fun writer. You can put a small tip if, if you want, if it's easier, but right now I still have the pink tip on here. But so I'm going to leave, you're going to see that I'm going to leave space where those lines are. So it's just going to be black when I fire it. And I'm going to leave a little space around the, um, the llama, the fur so that it looks like there's an outline there also. The whole idea with this project of doing the fun writer is to allow it to, um, to leave that space. So I'm gonna leave it again, I'm gonna leave a space right there where my line is. I'll hold it up closer in a minute. There you go, now. Now, I just want to fill it all in, and I don't want to go right to the white. I want to leave that little bit of space there also. It's really a fun project that's simple. I don't know if a kid could do it because of the fun writer thing, but um, it's just a fun project to do. You could do it all with a brush, but it's going to take a lot more coats to do it with a brush because you're going on the black. And the fun writer is nice so you don't have to do the outline. So you can see, and it's nice and thick. Um, 
It's on a little heavy, but not, like I said, not too heavy that it's going to do anything bad. It shouldn't. I've never had a problem with this, with the fun strokes. I can only speak for our color because that's, you know, what I'm using. And that's all I've ever used, really. So, okay, so they really work well in the fun writer bottles. Okay, so that's it on the on the red. See how the red is? See how I got the lines there? So I just avoided that where my line, the drawing line that I had on there. Okay, so that's it. Now, um, now I am going to take the white again because the his pom pom is white on his hat, and this pot is white. But now I'm not going to do any swishing of it. I'm going to put it on heavy, you know, with the fun rider like I did. Same thing, I've done everything. And I'm going to leave that space where the black is. Okay, so you can see, see how I left the space? So that's my, um, um, the little rim of the hat. And then I'm going to put this. Now you can make this as big and funky as you want it. I'm going to make it a little bigger than my drawing just because I want to. And uh, if you see that you get a little black in your white because you're doing this with the fun right or whatever, it's fine. It's not going to show up. So that is basically the plate other than, you know, you're going to do this here. Um, but we're going to do the gifts next. But that's basically the plate. If you didn't want to put the, the gifts on the um, the little packages on the on this uh, llama's back, um, the only other thing I did was I did this solid white. And I again, I left a little bit of, um, you can see a little bit of this uh, black showing through. But I put it on very heavy. I used a big brush. You can use the fun writer if you want. But I used a big brush and just put it on heavy. Um, and then I just splatted it with a bunch of snow. After the gifts were done, I splatted it with a bunch of snow and dipped it in clear glaze and fired it, and that was it. And it was finished. Okay, I am going to do the packages now. So what I did was just solid coated everything. Okay, so I did the red. You know, you can do any colors you want for this package, but this one here is rocking red. Um done real easy you have to let it dry before you can decorate the packages so you will do that on your own but you can wreck re you can decorate it after then um i think i did green kermit this package is kermit um i redrew the uh i retraced those little packages uh so that you could see the lines so this is the Kermit. Now, you can see that, I, again, I left the space right here between the packages, okay? So then I did a yellow, which is what a yoke is what I used. Um, let me make sure I can get it out. Okay, this one's what a yoke. So you just solid coat them, and then when they're dry, you can go put dots or do whatever you want with them. Put little dots like I did on this, where I put the dots and the stripes or whatever I wanted on it. Now I'm going to use blue. It's just to give the plate some color. Um, this kind of, that's why I did the packages. It, it kind of gave it a little bit of color. Okay, there's the blue. I'm going to do another red one because I don't want too many colors to have to use. Again, try to not to scrape the plate. Just try to drop the color in there. And I think I'll put another yellow one. I'm going to do it just like that one over there. Now, there's my solid packages. Now, 
The only other thing I gotta do is I have to put a little white dot in the eye because um, you need a dot in the eye in order to make it look like an eye, okay? So I did the white dot in the eye. I think the only thing I have left is I'm gonna show you how to put on the, um, the white um, on the bottom. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I'm gonna squeeze some white on here. I'm tipping my plate a little bit. Now I'm gonna use a big brush, okay? It's a big fluffy brush. Number 14, um, it's just a big brush because I want to put it on kind of heavy, okay? It's going to take a little while for this plate to dry because, again, I don't want to just brush it on. i just kind of putting it on there so that I only need to do one coat because it's snow. It doesn't have to be put on neatly with no... Um, I want the, the little bit of um, textury look so that, you know, it shows... I don't know, it shows a little bit of the black underneath. Um, the one thing you can swap this out for is Snowstorm. If you want to put Snowstorm, it would look great. You could put Snowstorm on this on the snow pot, and you could probably put Snowstorm on the, um, the hat rim and the ball on the end of the hat. You could do that too. Um, you know, it's pretty much uh, whatever you want. It's your choice. I'm going to go right to the edges of the feet because I want him to look like he's standing in the snow. So I am not going to leave a space there. Do you see how I'm loading this brush? It's just kind of heavy and it's all over the place here, swishing it on kind of. And that's how quick this plate was. To, you can see it wasn't didn't take too long. So you can see that some of the black shows through a little bit. I don't want a lot of it to show through, but um, that's it. Um, that's it other than taking a toothbrush, splattering the white all over it to give it that snow. Um, the other thing, um, I, I don't want to splatter it right now. That's why I'm telling you about it because... These are all still wet. It might not matter that much, but I'm going to let let the plate dry before I splatter it. But once once that's dry, I'm going to splatter it with the snow. Um, you could take um, a little cleanup tool, uh, maybe even a toothpick. I got a toothpick here. If you want to, if you did do anything on the edge where your your snowflake doesn't look right because you got paint on something. You could take the toothpick when it's dry. Is it's best to do this when it's when it's very dry, and clean up any little edges that you any place you got white. You know, it's just clean up after. Like I said, you can use this once it's dry, or you can use that little flat brush when it's wet. So that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this class. Uh, catch you later. <laughs>